We've gotten lots of questions in our comments section asking how do you paint grass or how do you paint pastures and that sort of thing. Well, there's a way to think about this that just might surprise you. When I get questions like that, I realize that you're thinking about the image itself. But if you ask yourself how to paint grass or how to paint waves in the ocean or how to paint a bark on a tree, you're asking yourself the wrong question because that's a three-dimensional world. And we're translating a three-dimensional world with two-dimensional language. Now what that means is when we can switch our attention to the two-dimensional language and ask that question, then that will inform us as to what we need to do to make that happen. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, take this photo here. Now, this we'll just look at the bottom part of this. We have grass. We have grass and move, that moves into the distance. But that's the three-dimensional image we have. What is the two-dimensional image? The two-dimensional language for that image is we have green. We have yellow-green towards the front, and it gets just a little bit less intense as it moves into the distance. So that's a two-dimensional language. That tells us one thing we need to do. What else do we have? We have variation in values. We have dark green and light green in the front. In the back, we don't have variation in values in the very, very distance. So that's another bit of two-dimensional language. Now, what's the third thing we see? We have textures. We have textures that we can see in front that seem to be moving in this sort of direction. But as we look into the distance, we see very subtle texture. And in the very distant distance, we see no texture at all. So we have three words there that we can use to describe what we need to do. We need a green that goes from a, a kind of yellow green to a little bit of a bluer and grayer green. We need a green that great, sort of gradates in value from the front to the back. We need a value that has contrast in front, but no contrast as it goes back. And we need a movement of the brush that pushes that value in the direction that we see these going. Now, we can do that very easily. I've just got a simple little layout on my palette here um, of a kind of a yellow green that uh, most that goes from the darkest dark to kind of a just a little bit past the middle value towards light. And I have blue here that does a similar thing. So what we'll do first of all then is we'll start with this sort of middle value green. And I'll just use this little area right here. And we'll start with this sort of middle value green. And we will lay the middle value green, sort of the middle value green. We'll just lay this in. I'm just going to do this in a small area here. I'm not going to try to do the whole, uh, the whole area, the whole thing. Because I just want to show you how to think about this. Um, and so we can do that. Now, why are we doing that? Because we're laying in the darkest darks that we see. So if we're laying in the darkest darks we're seeing, then that will account for this frontal area where we see these this variation of the dark and the light. As it moves into the distance, we see it getting a little bit lighter. So we can get this a little bit lighter. See, that's the two-dimensional language I'm talking to you. It gets a little bit lighter as it moves into distance there. And not only gets a little bit lighter, but a little cooler. If it's getting a little cooler, that tells us it's got a little blue in it as it moves right back in here. Let's put just a little bit more light in that blue. And, and blue-green It's the green that has a little bit of blue in it. And um, you see that's what happens as it moves into the distance. Now you can always see. And we do have a little shadow back there, but I'm not going to address that in this quick tip. We're just talking about how to create the grasses. All right, so we've got that. Now, what else do we need? We need to come back and look at that front where we have the value contrast. So we've already laid our, our darks in. And how, when the next question is, how light are those lighter greens? And so we can do that. And when we're pushing those lighter greens in, rather than just paint them in, let's look at the direction in which they seem to be moving. And when we see those lighter greens, we see them moving upward like that. So we can take our brush and we can just kind of move it up like that, touching the brush and moving it in the direction that we see those greens moving, those light, the lighter portions of those greens. And we can just look at that pattern 
we see how the pattern kind of goes like this of those uh, of those lighter green that's following the light okay now we, we want to uh, use a variation we see that those lighter greens are a little bit darker on this side so we'll make them on this side where we see the lighter greens we'll make them just a little bit darker and then we see as it goes back see that the contrast is stronger in front as we go back we see it's a much more subtle thing we see the lights are smaller the little light areas are smaller and so we will darken that light and make it small make those little strokes smaller but then we see in the distance we don't see any or hardly any variation at all we may see some variation in value as it moves into the distance and so we can kind of create uh, a little bit of variation in value. Have it a little lighter in some areas and a little darker in others depending on what we see. So we allow ourselves to describe what we see in that two-dimensional language. So we have the contrast, the value contrast, the strong value contrast in front. Let's give just a little bit of refinement to that. Now let's just bring that down like this. Let's pull the stronger contrast. Again, if you're going back in to put the dark, the darker darks, the stronger contrast in, let's put those in, in a brush stroke that does what we see that movement doing on the, in the scene itself. So if it's moving up, you push the brush up. If it's leaning over, you push the brush and allow it to lean over. And you look at the pattern, the pattern, what direction are those darts moving? That too is part of the two-dimensional language that we use our vocabulary for describing to us what we need to do in order to make these things happen. Now, we, now as I'm going a little bit lighter in front here, I'll push that, that paint that's a little bit lighter. I'll push that the same way. Let's get that just a little bit lighter, get a little bit more contrast here. I'll push that the same way. So allowing the pic allowing the scene, to, uh, allowing yourself to describe the scene according to the visual language, not according to it being grass. All right, now let's see a little bit more of that. A little bit darker there where the brush moves up. We're in the darker parts of it, we see the darker parts of it which are shadow and the brush moves up in that direction of the shadow and we move it up in the same pattern that we're seeing there now we see the contrast in the front we see that the gradation or the narrowing of the contrast of those little clumps as they get further back and we see that totally disappearing as it goes into distance. Now, I did, did all that with one flat brush. There are other brushes that you can use. Um, if you were to see taller grasses in the front, you might use the end of the fan brush. We have a quick tip on using the fan brush where you simply use that fan brush in that same motion where you allow it to uh, have the darker paint on the, on the tip of the brush and you're not pushing very hard just use the tip of the brush to push upward in the direction that you see it moving here direction is a visual two-dimensional visual description of what we do with the element of dark so dark light texture direction those kinds of things those are the kinds of things that you kinds of words you use to describe to yourself what to do so if you want to know more about this, we have two lessons in our video lessons uh, on dyingmuds.com, or two series, really, eight lessons. Two series, one, translating textures, um, it's where I teach you how to look at all different kinds of textures and translate those into paint, and then another that I call Creating Distance, that's series 39, uh, the translating textures of series 21, and this too involves uh, involves how things decrease and what you do to make things change as they move in the distance and so uh, check you might want to check those out if you're really interested in pursuing this and we have other videos there too and then if you have something that you'd like for me to address drop, drop us a comment right down here and we'll put it on the schedule and there's your quick tip